What's up guys? So I'm here and I'm going to be reacting to a video by Urinating Tree called No A's Oakland's Crossroads. For those of you that don't know, Urinating Tree makes really funny and um, interesting sports content. I feel like if your team is featured in a video, it's either a really good thing or a really bad thing. And this video is kind of a pessimistic view on the A's on and off the field. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and watch it, react to it, kind of give my insights on what I agree with or disagree with. Um, in this video. So yeah, let's get this thing started. Baseball is in dire straits. The league's first work stoppage in over 25 years is underway. And with how cordial they were before the 2020 season, I'm worried it's going to be a long haul before anything gets done. Both ownership and the players union are incredibly stubborn, but have valid points to their arguments. Baseball itself is hammering yeah, baseball is failing right now. Restrictions. The players have been getting consistently lowballed in salary due to collusion. There are many teams skirting by with bare bones payrolls and there was a deep chasm between the two sides. See, that's what I just don't like about MLB. It's not that, you know, it's unexciting because baseball, I feel like, is one of my favorite sports to watch. It's just there's so much disparity between the A's and every other team. And it's hard to, you know, fathom just how big of a difference there is between, you know, the A's and some of these really big market teams. When the players union thinks of the ills of baseball, they use the A's as their exhibit A. At first glance, sure, Oakland is a good team and they're usually competitive, but it's been in spite of themselves. That's what baffles me. It's like the A's, you know, last year they didn't make the playoffs, but they weren't terrible. And it's like, it's just crazy what goes on off the field as well. I think he's going to talk about that in a little bit. Their argument is if the A's could actually spend on players, there may be a chance for them to be more than competitive. It could have helped them in scenarios like this past year when they were a good team, but nothing that screamed World Series contenders. I want you to consider their offseason moves. When they cheap the fuck out on bringing back Liam Hendricks and Marcus Semien. Instead, they chose to purchase the great value versions of those players in Trevor Rose. That's what they always do. They always go for guys that are a tier lower than, you know, the what the par standard is. I mean, Hendricks and Simeon were all-star caliber players, and they went and cheaped out, like the, he mentioned. I totally agree. And fall on Elvis Andrews in the vain attempt at being competitive. There's an old adage that says you get what you pay for. Oakland. What a waste Rosenthal was, right? He never even saw the field. He was injured. Tried to save money for inferior products? Then they will get season-ending hip surgery before a pitch is thrown and near replacement level production with declining defense at short. They really could have used Hendricks and Semyon in 2021. Hendricks continues to be his dominant self, piecing together an all-star caliber performance to bolster a White Sox bullpen and lead the league in saves. His contract, despite yep. it being rich for a closer, is looking to be worth every penny. For so it always happens whenever they get rid of somebody, he goes on to be a great player. It always happens, and that's Liam Hendricks is a great example of that. For South Side. Semyon, on the other hand, had a career season with the Blue Jays. Let's put it this way. Yep, he Simeon. did so well, he Crazy set the home run record for a second baseman. And he won a gold glove there, too. As a result of this tremendous campaign, he was paid a vast fortune by the Texas Rangers. You remember them? Yeah. Oakland is so thinly strung together that one slight misfortune could send them tumbling over the edge. Turns out it wasn't a slight, but a severe one to Chris Bassett. It felt like his injury was symbolic in so many ways. Yep. Once he went down, the team did as well. A mass collapse into August and September, not only taking them out of the wild. Those months, those months were some of the most depressing months of A's baseball I've ever seen. You know, there's just low attendance and, you know, really no desire from them to go to the playoffs for the for the ownership. It's like they played terrible those months. Card race, but apparently any sort of respect for the organization whatsoever. The stereotype of Oakland baseball. Always good but never good enough to do anything significant. It's been torched. And it's ridiculous because they have the capability to be great. And they, like he said, they're only good ever. Never exceeding great. Sure, but at this point, you honestly wish it ended there. If the on-field product were the only problem, then this video wouldn't be a thing. But we all know that's an optimistic way of thinking. The A's have been treating the city of Oakland like shit for a while now. Kind of like how the Seattle Mariners... And I think that's reciprocal. I think, you know, a lot of people play, you know, I'm pointing the finger at you, I'm pointing the finger at you. I think they treat each other badly. I think the A's do treat Oakland badly, but I think Oakland treats the A's badly as well. ...relentlessly clown them this past season. Even if you choose to go surface level in your observations, you know something was wrong. Bob Melvin has been a respected manager in this game for a good bit. 
He's as decorated as a four-star general with how many times he's been in the running for AL Manager of the Year. But something unexpected happened this offseason. He took a trip down the five to San Diego to accept the same position with the Padres. The A's simply allowed him to leave one. And I seriously think there's got to be a lot of stuff we don't know, the public doesn't know about, about Bob Melvin, that why he went to San Diego, other than the fact that the A's missed the playoffs. I think definitely the ownership probably, you know, gave him a talking to or something. I don't know. It's just, it was depressing hearing he had to leave. When he was under contract, Andy was able to take a few of his assistants with him. Yeah, what kind did. of playoff contender does this, you ask? One that doesn't want to be one anymore. Melvin saw the writing on the wall. He even admitted as such. Their next manager will probably be a cheaper version of Melvin because that's all this organization is good for. You can't expect Billy Bean to be a- Yeah, to be honest, I'm not really feeling optimistic about Kotze. I mean, he seems like a good manager, but just like the, he mentioned earlier, the A's always go for the great value option, and I feel like that's kind of what Kotze is, but I don't know, we'll see. Much assistance these days. When looking at his actions, it feels like he's already got one foot out the door. He wants a new challenge. Chasing that rainbow for so long to come up short has worn him out. The time he has left with the A's may be limited, but that's not all the concern. Think team payroll. Ownership is tired of spending money when they can spend less and get just as many people to not show up. The popular consensus is Oakland shutting payroll down to $50 million next season. It's, I, I know he'll talk about it, but it's just a classic example of alienating the fan base. It's just, you know, the payroll getting lower and lower. It's, we can see it. Season. Some have speculated that the A's might go as low as $40 million in team salary. For reference, their team payroll was over $80 million last season and That's... would probably go well above $90 million. $40 million would just be absurd. That is, I, they can't do that. I, I really hope there's some sort of solution to this with you know, the whole lockout thing. And in 2022, if they didn't make a single move. So that means pieces have to go. Their trade deadline acquisitions and vets like Mark Kana are already gone. Matt Olson, Chris Bassett, Sean Manaya, and Matt Chapman are due big raises in arbitration. Yep. Not to mention countless others looking for a bounty. Even a child could... Yeah, they are. And unfortunately, I can't see most, if not all, of these guys signing with us. I just don't... I don't see it, especially if they're going to reduce that payroll. Put two and two together. They're going to be trading off pieces. Maybe a lot of them, considering how many holes they need to fill. Ace Brass can make the yep. excuse that they're doing it to bolster their now depleted farm system. Everyone will love it, they tell themselves. Except the fans, that is. The ace faithful of long at a distrust of John Fish. I hate that excuse. Like, the farm system, sure, maybe it's developing, but it's like, that's the excuse every time. It's not, you know, I don't believe in the prospect game 100%. I think you need good prospects. So I don't think you can rely on trading your pieces only uh, to get really good prospects. I just don't, I don't see the, lo the logic with that. During company and for very good reason. Fisher's a businessman. He only worries if the athletics are making a profit or are fiscally solvent. The performance on the field is secondary. Consider this question. If a team... And it's funny because the A's aren't really turning much of a profit. They're not a profitable, profitable team. You know, them and the Marlins are the rock bottom. And it's like he's slightly, you know, maybe getting a little bit of profit every year. But it's not like he's, you know, skyrocketing his profit. And a lot of that is due to the on-field production being lackluster and subpar plays a baseball game and no one shows up to it is it still yeah, exactly. technically played it may have been a perfect storm but nearly every single home game for most of the year was all but a sea of empty green seats their attendance figures make the tampa bay rays look healthy in comparison do teams in the middle of a playoff push who buy at the deadline with quality names and yeah he's definitely right on that it is very low um and i think a lot of that is, you know, due to the stadium, and I think a lot of that is due to the ownership. But I'd say ownership is more part of it because, I mean, you know, I, I bet he'll mention this. You can drive, you know, 10 extra miles, catch the Giants, and they're a very good team. And it that's to, you know, reflects the ownership spending and putting money onto the, the field. For a compelling product, play in stadiums so barren that Death Valley is more vibrant? You get the right camera angle, you'd think you were watching footage from the 2020 season. It's DEFCON 1 here. Take series against the White Sox in Texas. In those it's games, true. they only cracked the 8,000 ticket threshold once. The Rangers series was a weekender, by the way. In their final homestand of the season, they were barely cracking 4,000 tickets sold per game against Seattle. 
This was a series against a division. He's right, but I just want to say this. I don't really think this is very surprising. I think teams with bad stadiums or in a bad product on the field don't generally draw well. I don't think that's much of a surprise to anybody. Um, that being said, I, I think if they got a new stadium, it would solve most of this. Um, but uh, we'll see rival with major playoff implications and they can barely reach 10% occupancy. The weekend matches against Houston had a hard time hitting 10,000 fans in two of the three games. Their final home series of the season generated next to nothing. And before you go off talking about COVID restrictions, those were lifted in late June for the A's. The games I mentioned were in September. This goes significantly deeper than any standard discussed. This is a borderline fan revolt. They've had enough of all the shit that Fisher and his band of businessmen have pulled on the city and thrown upon the A's. And it's not like they're doing much to win the fans over. This past year, the A's cut perks to their season ticket program. Jacked up seat prices. Yeah, I think, you know, he made a pretty big generalization about the fans, but I do kind of agree with it because I think fans are tired of it. We're tired of, you know, these antics. And it's like, we want to support our team, but like, we don't want to support this guy who's profiting off, you know, a team that doesn't try or strive to go all the way but i don't know i'm it's that, that being said i'm not gonna like not go to a's games but it's like do I, I i'm at a crossroads with it marked up concessions and parking as well all the while dropping local marketing to a trick yeah, that when you can i want to talk about that that's ridiculous you know making the tickets more expensive especially you know the team didn't make the playoffs making the ticket prices more expensive for you know this isn't a new stadium this is the oakland coliseum they should be going down the ticket prices but no they're going up and it's the loyal fans i respect them like me and others still continue to go and it's like fisher doesn't deserve it though it's not you know something that he deserves to have you know loyal fans pay money to him and more money than is deserving to go to games consider the payroll cuts from what it looks to me they're sandbagging they're trying to make the product as unappealing as possible while pricing out anyone who would like to go. It's to artificially create fan apathy. So when it's time to move out, they don't get a mass backlash from fans. More of a meh fuck off feeling. Why the hell would anyone want to go to f No, I, I, okay, I think he is alienating the fan base on purpose, but I don't really know if it's the intent of wanting to move out of Oakland. I, I don't know. I, it's, it's an interesting discussion because... I, I, you know, it's definitely, there's something, something to be said about like, yeah, they're alienating the fan base too. So when they move out, it's like more, it makes more sense. And it like, you know, it doesn't seem as bad, but I, I just think he alienates the fan base to, you know, turn more of a profit because I think generally that's what's going to happen. If you cut players, you're going to, you, you know, you can still turn a pretty good profit despite having low attendance. I mean, attendance is big, but it's not everything in terms of money. So fucking Oko and deal with god-awful traffic and parking issues when they manage to have any sort of crowd. I actually disagree with that. Getting to the Oakland Coliseum is the easiest thing ever. There's, the parking is effortless. The, the traffic is usually non-existent. So I don't, I disagree with him pretty heavily on that. I don't think, I think actually getting to A's games is miles easier than going to the Giants games because you can park super easy. And that's one thing I like about the Coliseum actually. Um, but that being said, it's not still, yeah, I agree. It's not a nice stadium, but it's definitely easy to get to. And it's, it actually is really easy to get to in, in this sense. I could drive across the Bay to San Fran and not only get a much better stadium experience, but a cheaper one. How are you pricier than? Yeah, I 100% agree with that. How are we more expensive than the Giants who have a world-class stadium? And, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense. San Francisco. I'm not dismissing ownership's angle. There is no argument from anyone that the A's desperately need a new stadium. Oakland Coliseum may have a new name, but it's still as much of an atrocity to sport as it ever was. It's a failed relic of an age that promised efficiency, but the stadiums that were built weren't even that efficient. Oco makes Tropicana Field seem like paradise. Its only purposes are crippling depression and turning into a literal toilet. But here's where the problems begin. Despite their needs, the A's have burned their political capital in Oakland. That's not 100% true. They have burned some capital, but they've, you know, they're negotiating. They've definitely burned bridges, but I don't think that he, he very made, much made it like seem like, you know, their relationship with Oakland is over. This isn't the Raiders. They, yeah, the Raiders did, but the A's have not burned all the bridges in Oakland. That is not true. Um, so, you know, make to say that they're just done with Oakland, that's just a pretty ignorant statement in my opinion but yeah 
They strong-armed the city into renewing a team-friendly 10-year lease back in 2014 where, deep breath, they threatened to move the team. Every stadium pro Yeah, they threatened to move, but I, I think that's a little bit different because they tried to move to like San Jose, Fremont, and I think they have been playing games with the city of Oakland, but I think it's actually a lot better now than it was back in 2014. Proposal brought up has either been shut down or stalled out so far. It's mostly because of stubbornness from ownership. The newest proposal in That's not actually really true. Actually, most of the stadium plans were, were rejected by Oakland. Um, I, I'm not, you know, giving the ownership any credit, but I think most of the stadium plans for the Raiders, too, were uh, declined by Oakland, so. Discussion is Howard Terminal. Ideally, yeah. it's a great concept. Much more accessible to Oaklanders, the design and planning is solid, and it's all at a garish $12 billion price tag. If they want Oakland to take on a chunk- And it's privately funded, so that's that shouldn't be a concern to anybody. ...of the cost, they are mistaken. The city has massive issues- They don't. They don't want Oakland to take on the cost. And that's where I, what I have a problem with in this video. Uh, because that that's just a clearly an ignorant statement. That's what people opposed to the stadium are saying. They say, you know, oh, it's it's not privately funded. So, yeah, we can't use public money on the stadium. I, you know, I, I am not going to go into that, in my opinion on that. But I think that's, they don't want to do that, though. They don't, they don't have any desire to do that. I mean, I think Oakland probably would be willing to put up some money, but I don't think they're asking for it. It's privately funded. Um... So yeah. Issues that are well documented. Failing infrastructure, rampant homelessness, and affordable housing prices, steep budgetary cuts. I mean, they can't walk and chew gum. Like, that's the whole discussion of this has been Oakland can't vow public money. And first of all, they're not. Second of all, you know, I don't know where that came from. Uh, they Public money for stadiums is usually something that's required, but for this stadium plan, it isn't. And the affordable housing thing is a law, I'm pretty sure. So... It's not just Oakland. In nearly every sector, Oakland runs a deficit of tens of millions of dollars every year. The oh, I agree. I think the, the city is definitely like has its issues. It's definitely has a lot of problems, but I don't think you can bring the A's into this. They're a private business. They don't want public money. And yeah, they have their issues too, but it's like that it has nothing to do. This isn't the Raider situation. It's a lot different. Federal government has to infuse them to the tune of nine figures for the city to function. It's not that they don't want to help with a project. It's that they can't. Aiding a private... That's 100% untrue. They're actually collaborating with the A's as we speak. Uh, they're, you know, the EIR getting progress. We're the farthest we've ever been with Oakland, with an Oakland ballpark ever. You know, th uh, that isn't the Oakland Coliseum, a new Oakland ballpark. And to say that they can't help is only partially true. Maybe they can't help financially, um, but they definitely can help in terms of getting approvals done, um, you know, helping like the stadium and get negotiations done with this stadium. That's what the whole thing the stadium is about negotiating. What can Oakland get out of this? What can the A's get out of this? Um, and I see on the screen, he says the A's are, are going to pay for the stadium. Great. Where's the other $11 billion coming from? Um, I'm pretty, I, I could be wrong in this. I'm pretty sure it's all coming from investors. It's not coming or the A's organization itself. It's not coming for, there's not a dime coming out from the city. The only money that you could really make a case for is being used from Oakland is the tax money generated by the stadium, which, uh, is a hundred percent legitimate. It's not, it's nothing being in question. Stadium before anything else would be political suicide. They're trying to come to an agreement, but without political capital, Oakland wants something in return for their funding and land. They want any potential development to feature affordable housing. It's and there's nothing, there's no disagreement with that at this moment. Uh, so I don't know how you can use that as an argument against the stadium. That was a topic, that was a sticking point uh, a couple months ago, but it's, I haven't heard any disagreement with that any time recently. Noble, but they'll never get it. As a businessman, that addition is a deal breaker. Why should I settle for this offer when I can get a better one five miles down the road? That and I find that statement ironic when he alludes to Las Vegas because it isn't a better offer at all. Uh, having a waterfront ballpark is, you know, just so much more beneficial than having a stadium right in the middle of the desert where it, another team that used to play in Oakland by the name of the Raiders is currently failing with attendance, doing terrible there. They're an absolute failure joke in Vegas right now, the the Raiders are. Uh, they're almost at the bottom in terms of attendance. They're bottom five or six about. And uh, 
this would not be a good deal at all. That's a very bad statement by him. The town they're looking at is a place called Las Vegas. Oakland yeah. may have heard of it considering they lost the Raiders to them a few years ago. A's executives have met with city officials there several times over the past year. And all signs point to guys like John Fisher having a massive hard on for their new lust. They're looking at several land plots for stadium development. And have even agreed to play in their... And yet, uh, after all this time, they still haven't narrowed it down. It just goes to show how, like amateur this this idea is city's triple a stadium until the new digs are complete i don't know if las vegas is going to throw as much money around as they did for the raiders but they seem quite keen on punting future budgetary issues down the road for the sake of prestige it's a perfect and yet their mayor their governor both say that uh the governor of nevada and the mayor of las vegas literally are saying that getting the a's is outright not impossible but they've basically said that you know, it just wouldn't benefit the city. That's basically what they're saying right now. There's plenty of interviews about it. Perfect match. And sadly, the A's have all the leverage in this situation. They know that if they moved, Oakland would be losing their third sports franchise. And he's right. He's right on one thing. They do have the leverage on the situation, but it's, you know, it's a matter of you sticking in a place that will give you future money down the road, or you move to a city that doesn't support sports very adequately right now. Less than five years. We know about the Raiders move, but people tend to forget that the Warriors moved to the western part of the bay in San Francisco. It's a shitty part of business in sport, but an inevitable one. It leads to a lot of heartbreak. But John Fisher and his men are seemingly flaunting it. When team president Dave Cobble is publicly boasting about attending Vegas Golden Knights games on his Twitter account, when the A's were... I, I can't really take... You know, I, I was upset when he did that as well, but I can't really take it 100% seriously because I know for a fact that Cavill has been the puppet in this situation he's nobody to take seriously in this he's very much a cheerleader for las vegas instead of somebody to really look at as a legitimate threat to the move playing a game while previously sabotaging other stadium proposals due to his incompetence i don't think that looks too good for those in oakland ace fans i wish i had any sense of optimism about the team i want to tell you that all is going to be well but it probably won't Barring a sudden change of heart on both sides, there's a good chance the A's are going to be moving. I mean, you know, I, I respect this guy, but he's basically backing up his claims with hardly any evidence, mostly just opinion. And as somebody who follows this relocation saga very closely to the dot, I do all my research. Um, I, I can't agree with any of this, really. I, I just think what he's saying is... They're moving because Las Vegas is more prestigious and Oakland doesn't want them. And all those things, Las Vegas might be a more prestigious place for tourism, but for a sports team that is currently in dire need of a new stadium, the A's are, there's no reason for, legitimate reason for them to move to Vegas. And if they do, I'm wrong and everyone can say I'm wrong, but I'm telling you right now, there's no logical reason financially for the fans, for anybody that they would move to Vegas out of Oakland in the next few years. It will probably be Las Vegas they pack their bags for, but there may be another suitor or two. That's just ignorant. When you consider every single element, as a businessman, there is no reason for you to stay put. You can get a significantly better offer elsewhere. If Oakland somehow grovels at the team's feet... All that is... Okay, that, that makes no sense to me. I, I I talked about it earlier. There is reason to stay put. For, for one reason, you have a beautiful ballpark plan, Howard Terminal. It's, you know, the closest we've ever been to getting a new ballpark ever. They're, you know, they're very close to getting it. They're, you know, obviously it seems slow to the outsider, but if you do very, you know, close research, you know, the A's are very close to getting the stadium. It's very close. It's not a done deal. Um, neither is Las Vegas a done deal. And um, it, it, I don't know. These are just blanket statements. All it costs is decades of the city being in even more crippling debt. That part I understand, but it still doesn't suck any less for the fans that survived all the bullshit. How would they be in debt? I, I don't get it. It's not public money, like I said earlier. A massive chasm has been widening between ownership and fandom for decades. And it's now come to a head. Do you want to know That's the worst true. part? When they finally get their new publicly funded shrine, wherever it is, they're going to open up the checkbook and spend like no tomorrow to lure people to the ballpark. Cynical corporatism at its best. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Don't feel... And what... Th yeah, that could happen, but... I don't think under Fisher, he'd probably sell the team. Feel too shitty about it, Oakland. You can call this your own version of Moneyball towards affordable housing. And you got 
Gordon on deck. All right, that's pretty much the end of the video. I was showing the little uh, Kansas City Royals guys. Yeah, there he um, goes. yeah, I think I did it right there. So basically. I agree with him on the on-field stuff. Like, I think, you know, yeah, they need to spend more money. That's for sure. Um, there are a lot of issues with that. Now, pretty much everything he said, I, I, I hate to disagree, like, so harshly because I respect him. I watch this guy a lot. Um, but I will say this. I think, you know, that Oakland is very close to getting the stadium done. There, He basically made it seem like this plan is kind of Im amateur um, I'm talking about Howard Terminal. Made, he kind of made it seem like this plan isn't like very far on. It's very far on. You know, I think we could get shovels in the ground in the next couple of years. And I know that seems like a long time, but I think for a plan like this, it's going to take a while. Building a stadium in California is hard because California land is very valuable, opposed to somewhere like Georgia, where, you know, the Braves can get a new ballpark very easily. Um, that's why he seems very pessimistic in this sense. But I also think. You know, it, yeah, he's right on some things. I think, you know, there's reason to believe the A's will move to Las Vegas, but there's also plenty of reason to think they won't. And as somebody who's done a lot of research, I'm telling you right now, I don't think they will. I can almost guarantee you they won't move out, out of Oakland. Um, that being said, if they do, you know, it wouldn't make sense to me at all because the the plan in Oakland is very legit. It's very much far along and it's, you can't get a water park ballpark in many other parts of the country. Uh, certainly not in Las Vegas where it's desert and, uh, hardly any fans will show up because like he said at the beginning of the video, MLB is in a failing state right now. It's lack of fans, lack of support. And that's why kind of where we're in a lockout in my opinion. And, you know, already we've seen in the most popular league in the world, the NFL, the Raiders are failing. So why would the A's do well either? So yeah, that's my opinion on it. Um, let me know your thoughts if you watch this video. Uh, so, you know, you can, you know, I can hear about it and uh, that'll do it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.